All right, last time on Pokemon Fire Red, this exciting stuff happened. I'm so glad that they did this previously on. I like securely learned. <laughs> they do really like their adjectives in these recaps. That being said, telling you what moves you learned and like what Pokemon you moved around, while not the most exciting events, that is actually really helpful for the uh, recap. Now you actually know what you did last time. The most important thing though is that we did beat Lieutenant Surge and now we can move on. But first, this man. Uh, maybe? You're gonna have to be specific, you all use the same sprite. So there's a man in Route 2, but how do we get back to Route 2? We can't get through Mount Moon again. Ah, thanks. Make me go through Rock Tunnel, why don't you mutter, mutter, mutter. So we're going to be making a quick stop to Diglett's Cave. Three guesses as to what Pokemon we're going to find here. I'm always astounded that they actually called one of the dungeons in this Rock Cave. Rock tunnel. What? What's the? What's the tunnel? What's it got in it? You know, rocks. Yeah, rocks. So uh, here's one of two enemies we can find down here. It's a Diglett. Diglett's ground type. So, like I mentioned last episode, if you're having trouble with Lieutenant Surge, uh, come over here and pick up one of these guys. It's causing an earthquake. Now, thanks to the fact that this Diglett's actually surprisingly high-leveled, it didn't die in one hit to a water attack. That's part of what makes them so useful against Surge, is that they're just really strong for this point of the game. Yeah. I don't know why they gave you such a huge advantage against Surge. Like, I feel by this point you've actually got a pretty good selection even without Diglett's Cave. I guess they did want to give you a backup, but, uh... I feel certain other gym leaders actually warrant some safety Pokemon surrounding their city. Mm -hmm. I think uh, electric types in particular have such few weaknesses. I guess so, yeah. I usually do just, you know, overcome that with an Nidoran, though. Yeah. Also, I forgot your naming gimmick for a while, so I thought you were just gonna name it Fuck. <laughs> I would never. Anyway, here's Doug Trio, and I love Doug Trio because it's just three mad Diglets. <laughs> you kidnapped my brother. <laughs> you came to the wrong neighborhood. Fury swipes. <laughs> How are we doing this? We don't have claws. Also, notice that Doug Trio's level. <laughs> I actually didn't. Jesus. Yeah, so, again, if you're having troubles with Lieutenant Surge, pick yourself up one of these if you survive the encounter. You'll you'll beat Lieutenant Surge no problem. Makes me wonder why he set up camp right outside a tunnel filled with Pokemon that could kick his ass. <laughs> they actually weren't there before. He came to Vermilion and was like, "Oh, this is a good place. Ah, look at that nice little mountain over there. That just big old rock mound with nothing in it. Hey, what's that in the? Ca oh God, what? S something open in the mountain. There's a door there now. Oh my God, Diglett's no. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what, what kind? What kind of cave are we calling this? A oh, Diglett's cave. <laughs> Why do I even bother? I just have to die. We're here, Lieutenant Surge. We've heard of your crimes. You can't retire in peace, Lieutenant Surge. We're, we're here. <laughs> Fudge pops. Yeah, there's three of them. Also, I forget. Was Lieutenant Surge one of the uh, evil gym leaders in uh, the Pokemon Adventures manga? Yeah. Funny that you quantify it like that, because in this canon he's also a war criminal, so I'd say he's evil here. Yeah, but in in the manga there's a group of them. Yes. It's like Sabrina, Lieutenant Surge, and who else? Koga. Koga is okay, the only Koga. one that I don't think makes as much sense as the others. Yeah, not quite. But I think at that point they hadn't really characterized him as a dad. <laughs> 
<laughs> Koga is startlingly, startlingly like Vegeta. <laughs> I'll have to keep that one in mind. <laughs> you need to read Pokemon Adventures, it's actually good. Yeah, I feel like I ended up seeing all like the dumb parts that didn't jive with me when I was younger, or like the edgy parts, but... Hearing your descriptions of some of these things, it's actually kind of great. <laughs> Unfortunately, the edgy parts did jive with me. Anyways, I'm talking over something you probably wouldn't be talking about. <laughs> I mean, we got a Mr. Mime. It's not a huge deal. Um, I'm not really going to use Abra anyway, so, you know, no huge deal giving that up. I do lose access to teleport, which could be helpful, but I don't really want to give up a regular team slot for that, so it's not a huge deal for me. I mainly want Mr. Mime for the, um, you know, just having the Pokedex filled out. It's actually going to be really important for a thing coming up soon. Not this guy. Or, no, yeah, this guy's easy. Ten species. HMO5 is unfortunately Flash. So, Flash is a move that you don't necessarily need, but you should probably pick it up. Because it lights up dark caves. Man, I forgot how far off the beaten path Flash was. Yeah, seriously, they make you leave all the way here for it, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, Flash as a move, like, dark caves don't... Like, you can get through them without Flash, it's just, you know, more annoying. But in terms of being a move, all it does is decrease the enemy's uh, accuracy, so... It... Like, it could potentially be useful, I guess, but like... I don't know, does anybody use it? I know I don't, ever. It's weird because, like, accuracy and evasion are two, like, they're more important than the other stats because there are fewer moves that affect them. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's any way to raise accuracy. There might be ways to lower evasion. Yes, we said. But it's, like, a lot harder to account for evasion and accuracy being changed than it is for defense attack, special attack, all that. Yeah, so it's weird. Like, you'd think Flash would be super desirable, but I never really want it. Most people do consider it kind of a waste of a uh, move slot. So anyway, here's a Baku. This Baku's not having a good day. So we're gonna catch this here, Baku. It's going to shake once, and a twice, and a thrice, and done. So, this Drazi right here is actually going to be a uh, permanent member of the party. Because I don't really use Drazi all that much, so I figured I'd try it out. Anyway, here's Baku. She devours dreams. And we're going to name her... Alright, so, Mira. Again, that's one heck of a deep cut that I'm not going to explain right now. But we are going to check out Mira's stats because she's got adamant nature, which... I know I'm not super particular about my natures, but this one's not great because it's increased attack, decreased special attack. So you just have to teach your Zen headbutt. I mean, yeah, technically, Drowsy is, like, a more physically-oriented psychic Pokémon, but, um... <laughs> oh, you came to the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. I just caught a Pokémon designed to kick your ass. Surprise! I finally have something I can use on you a little bit. Actually, <laughs> not really, because Mira's... Only level 11, she's 10 levels behind, but she can put you to sleep. What do you think about that? She's 10 levels behind, and you immediately came out with a dark type move. Is there a part where Abaku just looks at an Ekans really hard and hopes it just falls over? Not that I remember. And you already know this, but there is a substantial part of one arc where Blue goes around dressed like Piccolo for no reason. Yep. Anyway, that pu snake just punched itself out, which is pretty great. <laughs> oh no! You're not in the cult, go away! 
<laughs> oh, I forgot about the cult. I was just linking him to Rao. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, Gamer Hugo. Uh, if it's not obvious, the uh, Gamer Pokemon trainer was a gambler, but they changed that. Can't have gambling. That Poliwag just tried to use the hypnosis trick on us. How dare you? Don't turn the tables on me. How dare you? I'm trying to remember, at some point, they started giving the gambler trainers Pokemon that knew a bunch of one-hit kill moves. That, like, rarely fired. It'd probably be Gen 4 or 5, because those are the generations I'm not as familiar with. Right, I know that, like, uh, in Let's Go, they, like, retroactively gave them Pokemon with those moves. Mm hmm Yep, it's me, a gamer. <laughs> me, the epic gamer Hugo. Oh no, I've lost. Pay no attention to my gaming cup. It, it's for gaming, not gambling. <laughs> it doesn't store dice, it only stores Mountain Dew. <laughs> I shouldn't have it upside down, but this Mountain Dew is solid, so it's not going to soak into the ground. It's just disgusting in a different way. It's a boss blast uh, freezy slushy. That's the word. I kept wanting to call it a smoothie, but that's not right. It's not no. right at all. Anyways, we're beating up an electrician now. Yeah, he's got important work to do. Did you need that magnet? I hope you didn't. I have knocked it out cold. Oh, you've got a second one. Well, let me knock that one out, too. Anyway, Magnemite doesn't actually float, by the way. <laughs> Some of them do, right? No, wait. In this in this gen, all Pokemon had, of this species had the same ability, so you're right. Yep. They don't uh, give them diverging uh, abilities for, I think, only one more gen. That was a Gen 4 thing for sure. You made things harder, just give Pokemon a good ability to use. Don't make me think about it too much. <laughs> you spark plug. Well, that was fun, getting beaten up by a kid, but I do have important electrical work to do. Lieutenant Surge isn't going to be happy if I don't get this done. Ah! Dave, common youngster name. Hello, I'm Dave. I'm in second grade. I raised my Pokemon carefully, so I have one pre-evolution and one mid. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Wait a minute, is that why poison is weak to ground types? Because it's like pollution being put up against Earth. Maybe? Maybe there's a better mnemonic for that. I'd have to... F yeah, I've never really thought about that. Yeah, I don't weird. mean mnemonic, I mean like logical explanation. Well, yeah, but whatever. Because I've always thought of it as like, you know, venom and dirt. But is it supposed to be like pollution and like Gaia? Earth is a concept and not just the dirt? Uh, so anyway, quick uh, aside, I'm not learning self-destruct. <laughs> Self-destruct makes your Pokemon explode. It does a lot of damage, but also it's a normal type move, so make of that what you will. But yeah, I don't want my Pokemon to explode. How dare you? But yeah, I don't know, maybe. At some point, somebody need, just needs to ask whoever specifically designs the typing what some of these typings are, like, or matchups are, uh... What's going on here? Yeah. How how did you arrive at this matchup? What the hell is going on with Ghost Dark? As if Ghost needed another weakness. <laughs> what the fuck does Dark resist bug? I guess if you play dirty, uh, Common Rider can't beat you up. 
do you realize you've gotten ground and flying reversed in return in regards to their weakness to electricity? You should really be switched around. Well, I mean, obviously electricity doesn't affect ground because, you know, it grounds out the electricity. That's what makes it... God! Airplanes don't have to worry about electricity. You know what I'm talking about, Jasper. What does a bell sprout have to do with gaming? I'm an elite gamer now! That's me, Bellsprout. This is my voice. <laughs> There's my friend Oddish. He plays Fortnite. I was just about to say, like, I can't wait for Pokemon games to have, like, every trainer nicknames their Pokemon. God. So all the gaming, uh, all the gamer trainers just have their Pokemon named Fortnite. <laughs> Literally all of them. You might be asking, would they be named after different video games? No, just Fortnite. <laughs> it's all just Fortnite. What do you mean Nintendo has a large enough library that they could conceivably name every single individual Pokemon after a different video game and not have to worry about trademarks? Just name all but Pokemon no, Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> I would fucking die if I had to fight a Porygon named Virtual Boy, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes, that is what you are. <laughs> Who's a good virtual boy? And there goes his single Magmite. Couldn't have even had a Magneton. Alright, so who do we got over here? No gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a word of warning, I fucking suck. It's me, Darian. Literally, I've never won in my life. Please, just lose. Just load your game, go back to the Pokemon Center, make it so you only have one weak Pokemon, and please, God, just give me a win. Just one. Even Glass Joe has a win. Glass Joe! My kill-death ratio is zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have the move Pursuit right here. Pursuit's a Dark-type move in this game. And if a foe's switching out, then you'll actually do extra damage to them before they leave. Oh uh, yeah, switching out, that thing the trainers do all the time <laughs> in single player. Yeah, it's more useful in competitive. Uh, in Gen 4, I'd imagine it'd be pretty useful, though, because... Trainers will slightly more reliably change out. They do a little bit in this game, but it is very rare that it actually happens. <laughs> yeah, you know, a critical hit, that, yep, makes sense. We'll never get the chicken dinner at this rate. Ah. <laughs> oh. My life is a joke. Alright, so we got one gamer down, and I believe. Uh, nope, this guy's the next fight. So, this area's had like a whole lot of opposites. Like, there is this. There's that one kid we fought earlier who was like, oh man, I've trained my Pokemon. I hope I've trained him well. And then there's this kid who's like, I'm already great. I'm the best. And he starts with a Rattata, so we already know he's a liar. Yep. And he's got two Rattata. Hmm. Something tells me that Nidorino could have fuck kicked your ass, kid. Also, is this kid's name like one word away from bastard? In Japanese. I have no idea what his Japanese name is, so... I said word, but I meant letter. Uh, well, his name is Yasu, and Yatsu is, like, a rude way of addressing someone. Okay. It gets translated as, like, bastard, asshole, dumbass. It's just a rude way of saying you. Darn. 
<laughs> so yeah, he blames it on his Pokemon. And yeah, then he just talks about a different Pokemon. But yeah, he didn't take that uh, loss nearly as well as the other kid did. He was like, mm, guess I just need to keep training. I'm a Shonen protagonist. And then we have this gamer right here who's never lost. Unlike the, <laughs> unlike the other gamer who's never won. My streams of Fortnite have millions of viewers because I never lose. Alright. Let me see if I can get through this Pokemon fight without saying a racial slur. <laughs> God damn it, I wasn't I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I wasn't gonna kill that joke. Oh hey, so much for luck, huh? Yeah, goodbye. I just magnituded that Voltorb the hardest it possibly could have been magnituded. Wait, what's happening to my Voltorb? This has literally never happened before. I don't know how to respond. How could I ever lose with a Voltorb? This is impossible. No one could have foreseen this. Alright, Magnemite, you win every time. Nothing can beat a Magnemite. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> One shot about the Miss Pokemon. My KD ratio! And then he just sinks beneath the ground. I... <laughs> I can't help but just picture this guy talk, acting like rules card. <laughs> God damn it! That's exactly what I was thinking, like I've never lost! Beats him immediately. God damn it! I never need to rename my Pokemon. Anyway, these guys are talking about Lavender Town, but we can't get there yet for reasons. Remember when you needed a specific NPC to rename your Pokemon? I feel like you still do. Not in Let's Go. Oh, cool. That's, I'm pretty sure, a new function. I don't remember that being a thing in the uh, other newer games. Alright, so this guy's got the item finder. This is super important. And thankfully, I have exactly 30 kinds of Pokemon. Thanks, Mr. Mime. <laughs> the happiest anyone has ever been to see a Mr. Mime. <laughs> yep, the only time that's been good. So yeah, the item finder is good for that one tunnel we went through, and it will also be incredibly good for getting very specific items later on. Big Pokemon. That's just right outside of this place. <laughs> he just aims down. Yeah, and let's go. Uh, the item finder stuff is just attached to your partner Pokemon. They just wave their tails when you step over an item. That's rad. So this guy gives you a um, lab coat. Huh. One for you and one for your partner Pokemon. Oh my god, that's adorable. Eevee with a lab coat. Uh, there's a Snorlax back there that is blocking the road. We can't get by him just yet, so yes, that's why this area is a dead end. Anyway, Eevee in a lab coat. <laughs> oh my god. Still need to play Let's Go at some point. <laughs> yeah, you need to get Let's Go. Uh, last time I was in, I can't remember if it was Walmart or Target, but like, there were plenty of copies of Let's Go Pikachu, but I didn't remember seeing any of Let's Go Eevee. Everyone's after that Let's Go Eevee. Eevee Eevee's great. Eevee's the best, everyone. There's like none in Russia. Jeez. Pokemon Russia like deliberately ordered way fewer copies of Eevee because the head of Nintendo of Russia was convinced that Eevee was not popular in Russia. How dare you! I can't believe we're ending off this episode on this note. Eevee's great, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Yeah, the president of Nintendo of Russia is no longer president of Nintendo of Russia specifically because of that decision.